We're going to go ahead and get started tonight. Again, I'd like to welcome each and every one of you here that are with us in the building. Uh, Mike and Mary Roberts, it's good to see you all back here. They hadn't been here for a while. I know they're coming in on Wednesday, so I'll give them a hand tonight. Glad to see you here this evening. Doris, it's good to see you back with us tonight, too. Right, guys. So, uh, again, we're going to be doing communion at the end of the service tonight, so we'll be doing prayer and stuff here in a little bit. Just a couple things, and then we'll turn it over to Steve for the singing. But uh, again, we want to remember Kenny Corden. He's been in the hospital this week, and uh, he's had some uh, breathing problems, I suppose, but he had a lot of fluid built up. They actually had to put a tube in his side, and they drained it, and he said he's doing a whole lot better. So hopefully that's a good sign. And uh, Donna Pierce, she had been in the hospital the other day, but uh, I'll go over a few more of them when we get ready for prayer. But right now we're going to start singing, and I'm going to turn it over to Steve right now. All right, good evening. Page 480. Page 480. <laughs>
We're going to start out with prayer tonight. And Steve's going to do a special for us before we go into the Word tonight. Uh, we'll be having communion at the end. And uh, again, you that haven't been here before, uh, Sandra, you're going to help me tonight, right? Yes. Is that Millie back here? Kayla, okay, I didn't even, I couldn't tell who that was. Yeah. Good to see you here tonight. I give her a hand tonight. So, we all wearing these bandito masks. I can't tell all the time. So, but anyway, uh, again, we'll be doing that at the end. But uh, we're going to get ready for prayer here before we do that. Has anybody got a testimony tonight? Again, it's good to see some of you in here tonight that haven't been here for a while. And again, I know we're still fighting with COVID. And, Still trying to be as safe as we can, but uh, anybody got a testimony, something good the Lord did for you? Doris? I had a doctor's appointment and uh, found out if I could have surgery, and uh, he said that I would be safe to take the anesthetic and uh, have the surgery. So it's a goal. Give the Lord a hand for that. I'm going to keep praying for that go well with it. Anybody else tonight, something good the Lord did for you? Shirley? Well, Bernie has his melanoma cancer surgery tomorrow, but thank the Lord that he just went for a checkup and they found it. Mm -hmm. So I'm just thankful that they keep a, a close watch on it. And also, I want to say the guy that was up there last week, what a wonderful uh, message he gave before he preached. David Wire. Yes. David Wire with a cancer situation. Mm -hmm. Yes. We'll give a hand for that. We'll be praying for that. Okay. Absolutely. Anybody else tonight? I say, uh, again, we certainly want to remember Kenny Carden, uh, still in the hospital from what I understand. He may be in there for two or three more days the way they talk. They're trying to find out what's causing him to build fluid up wherever it's at in there. Uh, like I say, Donna Pierce, I think she had a fall. That's why she went to the hospital the other day, but uh, I'm pretty sure they sent her right back home. So we want to remember her in prayer. There's a gentleman by the name of Charles, and I won't give the name, but he's having some some situations that we need to pray for. And then Dave Wire, his son-in-law's dad, uh, Mike Delaney, he passed away. I don't know if that's any kin to the Delaney's that come here or not, but uh, again, that's uh, David Wire's son-in-law's dad that passed. So we want to remember that family tonight also. Brian Hills called, said he's having car trouble, wanted us to be praying for him. Lisa Davis, uh, they called me this morning. She's having some hard times and uh, just wanted prayer. So we, we need to really, uh, again, be praying for her. After she takes some chemo treatments, she said every time it's been worse. So she's got one more to do. And uh, hopefully in the very near future, I think it's somewhere in the first part of March. So as soon as she gets that over with, hopefully she can get her strength gained back and things will go better for her for sure. So certainly want to, again, keep her in prayer. And uh, again, the Bodkins, uh, Eddie and Violet both, still praying for them. And uh, still praying for, like I said, with Doris here, still looking at a surgery coming up, praying for her and Ben both. And uh, Dave Perkins, I know... Uh, Tom was asking me about him there a while ago. We got to find out about him. He'd been in the hospital, so we want to keep praying for him. William Doug Fields, uh, Montina Morgan, the Evanoffs, uh, the James family for all of our shut-ins. Uh, still praying for those dealing with COVID and cancer and other health health but <laughs> but but health issues. We'll get it out here in a minute. And then uh, Michelle Dahl, she was telling me about her brother Steve. He. He had some back issues, and I think they were going to take him to a rehab or somewhere to try to get him some help with that. So we want to keep him in prayer also. Uh, taking prayer requests from you all tonight. Doors team. Doors team. Anybody? Okay. Prayer request out here. Anybody? Sandra? For uh, family and for friends. Okay. Anybody? Yes, yeah, Sherry? Uh, for my neighbor, Linda Jackson. She's supposed to have open heart surgery on March 9th. Oh, that's right. I wrote that down the other day. I put her on that prayer list. Okay. Mary? Yeah, my nephew's having this back and depression really bad again, and Bethany's still having morning sick this morning and the night. Mm. How, far, how far is she now? Uh, she let the cat out of the bag the other day, so I'm asking. No, that's fine. <laughs> 
17 weeks. Okay, we certainly want to keep her in prayer for that. Another expecting mother for sure. Anybody else tonight? How many with uplifted hands for yourself or someone else? Again, God sees those hands. And uh, let's just go ahead and have prayer. You can stay seated if you want to. Remember our prayer book of remembrance up here also. Father God, as we come to you this night, we thank you, Lord, for the day that you've given us. We thank you for watching over, protecting us, keeping us in your love and in your spirit. Uh, we thank you, God, for the time that we've had here this far. And we just pray, God, for all the ones that have been mentioned here tonight, Lord. We pray for Kenny there in the hospital. Uh, again, possibly also that David Perkins, if he's still in there too. Others that are facing procedures such as Doris and others, we just want to continue to lift him up in prayer. Pray for uh, Willie and Doug that they're doing all right also. And uh, again, for all of our shut-ins, uh, praying for Judy Hall tonight. I know she's having some health issues too. Still praying for Montina Morgan, for the Evanoffs, uh, the James family. And uh, again, the others that have been mentioned here, Lord, for the, again, the uh, Delaney family, for the one that, uh, again, they, our son-in-law's dad has passed away. We want to keep him in prayer tonight also for that family. Be with them. And uh, again, the, the name was Mike Delaney. We certainly want to pray for that family. As they've mentioned, Ernie, for tomorrow, I pray that everything will go well with that. And uh, again, for the, the nephew that's having some issues too. Lord, there's a young man, well, however young you want to call him, going through some, some problems right now. We want to lift him up to, to you in prayer and uh, pray, Lord, for some of the, the emotional things that he's going through. And Lord, you know exactly what it is that you'll be with him. And again, for Donna Pierce, uh, again, for all the hands that went up, for the ones that are watching and listening by the, again, the webcast. I, I pray God for the ones that they've got on their hearts and minds during this time when they watch this also. Be with us all. Uh, continue to bless this evening together and uh, let us feel your presence and power. And Lord, may the communion be a, an anointed of you also. And we just lift it all up to you. And even for the young man that's got car problems, pray for him. Be with us all, we pray, and we thank you in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. And right now, Steve's going to do a special for us. Give him a hand tonight, if you will.
go get your Bible. Turn over to the book of 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter. And uh, we're just going to start back in the beginning of that. We read some of it last week, but uh, the topic something we definitely need to keep in mind on. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, bless and anoint your word in our heart tonight, we pray, Lord, for those in the building as well as those that will be listening, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 1 says, for we know, that word know there is intimate, that, that's not just a, a knowledgeable know, that means intimately, I totally know, for we know that our earthly house and when he's talking about that house, you remember the Bible says, in my Father's house are many mansions. Same word used here. He's talking about our body, the dwelling place that we're in right now, but we've got a better dwelling place coming up. But it says, for we know that our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved. We have a building of God, a house not made with hands. In other words, it had nothing to do with mankind. You know, now, you know, when we have children, you know, the mother and the father has something to do with it. But when it comes to this birth here, this place here, it's totally different. It's the same thing when Jesus, you remember when he told them one time, he said, destroy this temple and in three days I'll raise it up again. He wasn't talking about the temple of Solomon that they thought he were about, or Hezekiah, the ones that rebuilt and all. But he wasn't talking about that physical temple. He was talking about his body. And this is talking about... in retrospect with us being a part of that but it says a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens for in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven for in this we groan you know inside our our physical being it's getting farther and farther along all the time but our spirit is clinging to where it's going one of these days. You know, one of these days, this shell is going to either it's going to change or it's going to, you know, go back to the ground and then change when it comes out. But, but again, one of these days, this spirit is going to leave this body unless the Lord changes the body at the same time at the rapture, I believe. But again, there's a groaning going on inside because our spirit and our flesh wrestle against each other. You know, it says... You know, flesh and blood has not revealed us to you, but the Spirit inside of you. For in us we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality. We are mortal beings, folks. And mortal, again, that's a Greek word, and it means death, basically. One of these days, if the Lord don't tarry, our, our, you know, our fleshly part of us is going to die. Clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up with life. Now he that hath wrought us or prepared us, made us or whatever you want to use for that, for the selfsame thing is God who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Now I believe he's talking to Christians there, don't you? I believe he's talking to believers, and I'll say more about that when we read on down here. Therefore, we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Hmm. For we walk by faith and not by sight. I was talking to a person, I think it was Sandy Coulter this morning, I was talking to her a little bit, and we were talking about, you know, uh, again, one of these days this is going to take a transformation. We're going to go from this place to another place. You know, it's just kind of like trading homes. You know, this home that we're living in right now is not always going to be the home we're living in. One of these days, we're going to step out of this home, this shell, this tabernacle, this tent, this body, whatever you may want to label it. We're going to step on into glory. You know, one thing I told her, I'm not real, I, I want to do that, but I'm not real hip about that all of a sudden to hit at the end, so to speak. You know, the Bible does say the last enemy that will be defeated is death. That part always bothered me. But again, I know that I've got faith in God and I know that I'm ready. It's just that sudden stop at the end. It's kind of like falling off the cliff. You know, sooner or later you're going to hit the bottom. That's kind of like life in this 
in this physical body. Sooner or later, it's going to come to an end. And you know, these bodies are made that way. Ever since the fall of the garden, you know, we've only been allotted so many days, and then after the flood, the, the allotted days even got shorter. But anyway, we are confident, I say, and really rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. For we, and again, I believe that's talking to the church here, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. I believe people that are not in this judgment will be in the white throne judgment that it talks about over in Revelation chapter 20. So I'd rather be in this one. We will be judged. How many of you know Christians will be judged? We're not going to be judged for salvation. You know, if you're not in this time here, then you're a mess. And again, I'm not saying you can't backslide, but I'm saying if you're a Christian and you get before the judgment seat of Christ, He's not going to judge you about salvation because the blood's been applied. If you get that far, you're good. But the thing about it is, He's going to judge you by what you've did during your time here on this earth. What have you done with the talents that He's given you? What have you done with the things that He's allotted you to do? Have you hid your talents under a bushel basket? Have you put them somewhere where nobody could find them? Or have you used them to the best? You know, uh, you know, we can make comparison. Look at Billy Graham. Look at all the places. You know, whether you like him or not, I think most people did and still do. But look at all the things that that man did. I mean, all over the world. You heard about him all the way back in the 50s, all the way up until his death. Now you hear about his family, his, his son, his daughter, and everyone else. You know, can you imagine the rewards that that man has in heaven? And again, I'm not trying to down yours or mine either one, but just looking, you know, in comparison, there's some people that haven't did anything for the Lord, but they're still a believer. They love the Lord and they're going to make it to heaven and they'll get there by the hair of their chinny chin chin, so to speak. But when they get there, their rewards will not be that great. Well, again, I know, you know, I've said before, I'd rather be in the worst part of heaven than the best part of hell, but at the same time, we still like to take something good with us. You know, I'd like to know that something we did here on this earth made a, a, a touch to somebody else's. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in His body according to that they have done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade man, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest on, in your conscience. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that you may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearance and not in heart. A lot of people just being show-offs and their hearts not really in what they're doing. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God. Or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of God, and again, we talk, the love of Christ, I should say, we talked about last week that again, Paul was defending his ministry. He's still doing it in part here, letting them know this. For the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And of course, we know that we were dead in our trespasses of sin, all of us were before we got saved. And that he died for all, that they which should live, or should which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ, and that's talking about these apostles, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. In other words, he done died that fleshly death. And here's the scripture that we all like to remember. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a what? A new creature. And I may say creation many times. Or, but anyway, he's a new creature according to Scripture. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. You know, that's even now. You know, there's going to be a change in our body, you know, when we die and go to heaven or when we're raptured out and go to be with God in glory at that time. But again, we are new creations, new creatures, as the Scripture says here. We've been made a brand new the day that we got saved, the day that we give our heart and life to Christ. Verse 18 says, And all things are of God who hath reconciled us. Reconciled means to bring us back to the place that we needed to be at. And to Himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. In other words, but putting things back 
the way it should be. Bringing things back to where it was intended to be. Bringing it back into the friendships and the relationships it needed to be. You know, I don't know if you know this, but if you're not a, a child of God, do you know the Bible says we're His enemies? That's not saying God's enemies with us, but we're enemies with God because this world is an enmity to God. Everything we do and behave like is totally opposed to what God wants us to do. First of all, the biggest thing is trusting Him as Savior, isn't it? Trusting Him as our Lord. To say that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself, not imputing, that word imputing means accounting, their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. That's what this Bible is about, bringing us back to where we need to be at. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray ye in Christ, be ye reconciled to God, for He hath made Him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. He traded His righteousness for our sins. You know, when we say that we're righteous, you need to make sure that you understand, I'm not self-righteous. Because my righteousness, again, we've said many times, is as filthy rags in the sight of God. But you know what? When we stand before God, He's not going to see our selfish righteousness, is it? He's going to see Jesus' righteousness because He took our place on an old rugged cross. And when He did that, He exchanged what we couldn't exchange ourselves. He took upon Him what we couldn't take out of ourselves, and He took it and nailed it to that cross. And even defeated death, hell, and the grave, praise God. Aren't you glad of that? Praise God forever. For He had made Him to be sin for us. You remember when Jesus was on the cross, and He said, My God, my God, why hast Thou forsaken us? or forsaken me, I should say. The moment that he was doing that, that's when the clouds, remember it became dark all over the earth, it said that day. And it was probably around somewhere between 3 and 6 o'clock in the afternoon. It shouldn't have been that dark at that time. But that darkness came because I believe the Father had to literally turn his face away from the Son. Because the Bible says God cannot look upon sin in a favorable way. I know God looks at us and we've had sin, but I'm talking about favorably. You know, that darkness come upon the face of the earth when Jesus actually become that Lamb of God that was dying on that cross that day. But again, He traded His righteousness for our sins and defeated them. And again, He still has His righteousness because He raised from the dead. And again, He sits at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. I want you, if you will, also turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And at least we're not trying to beat an ice storm tonight, are we? <laughs> so we'll save a little time for communion here at the end. But uh, I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians 15, 35, verse 35. But some man will say... How are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool, thou, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it dieth, or it dies. Over in John, I believe it's John 12, 24, it says, Except the corn of wheat falleth to the ground and dieth, it abideth alone. But when it dies, it brings forth much fruit. And that's talking about when you plant seed in the ground, you don't look for that seed to come back up the same way, do you? You know, if I plant corn seed, I want a corn stock to come up. You know, when I suck, well, again, it's making a comparison about our bodies with this too. But it says, going on here, And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain, it may chance of wheat or of some other grain. Again, this is comparatively speaking here. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased to him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh. There is one kind of flesh of man, another flesh of beast, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestials. What is celestial? Anybody know? Celestial is talking about heavenly. Okay? And terrestrial is talking about, you know, the earth here. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon. And again, comparison. He's not talking about resurrections of these, you know, inanimate things. But it says there is 
again, one glory of the sun, one of the moon, and another glory of the stars, for one star differeth from another star in glory. Do you know that God knows the stars by name, basically? So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. In other words, it's sown in death, but it's raised, and basically this old body is going right back to the ground, basically. But when it's raised, it's going to be, it's going to be raised up mortal, immortal, and incorrupt. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. There's power in the blood of Jesus Christ. There's power in the resurrection that makes it possible for us to raise from the dead. It is sown in natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. So we see that there's going to be a, a differential here. You know, I think if you do enough study, there's going to be some likeness of this body that we have. I don't know how much we're going to recognize each other. I'd like to think that we at least know we're friends. <laughs> I like to at least know, you know, as far as you know, certain things, it's got different talkings about it. But I know they recognize, you know, because that's a question a lot of people ask: Are we going to recognize each other in heaven? For some reason, I believe we'll still have our same identity of the body that we have. But it's going to be different. Remember Jesus when he come up out of the grave. You know, eventually they did recognize him, didn't they? But did you remember at first they walked with him? You remember the disciples walking with him when he left the tomb? And they didn't even know who he was until they broke bread. And when they broke bread, they immediately knew who he was. So something about the Spirit opened their eyes up to that. Maybe that's something we can look forward to when our eyes are open on the other side of glory. We're going to know each other more than we've ever known each other, praise God. And again, I don't have all the answers to those things, but that's why we're still studying the Bible, isn't it, all of us? Going on here, it says, there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, verse 45, the first man, Adam, was a living soul. A soul is a mind, will, and emotion. The last Adam was made a quickening, that means a living spirit. Howbeit that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterwards that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. And again, I still think that has to do with free moral agent. You know, God give us free... To, you know, we've got the ability to make decisions. You know, the Bible says, Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. Again, just to boil it down, Jesus said, If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. You know, if you don't love the Lord, you're not going to want to do what the Lord says, are you? If you don't love a person, you're not going to want to do what they say. You know, when you love somebody, it's not because I have to do something, it's because I want to do something. You know, that's the difference between a relationship with God and a religion with God. People that follow religions, they burn out quickly. And they fail a whole lot more. We fail too, but not nearly as much as if you was just trying to follow the religious thing of it. Just trying to do it because somebody gave us a list of do's and no. Isn't the, didn't the Bible even tell us that the law, you know, it could not save? You know, it, it could condemn a man, it could condemn a woman or a child, but it never could save them. It could never set them free from the consciousness of sins. But when Jesus died on that old rugged cross, and when He was buried, when He rose again, and when He was the first fruit of, of the resurrection, He made that capability for all of us. Not just some of us, not just for preachers, not just for people that go to seminary and cemetery or whatever they want to call it, and all that other stuff, or, you know, people that are in whatever clergy position. It's for all of us as Christians, regardless of what position you may or may not hold in a church or in a religious organization. But, but again it says, the first, the first Adam is of the earth earthly, earthy. the second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as, it, as, and as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also, and I believe this is, again, future tense, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. We'll be like Jesus one of these days, folks. And I'm not talking about deity of God. I'm talking about we're going to be in that spiritual body. You know, Jesus, and you know, there were some things about Jesus. Remember he ate? He still ate, didn't he? I mean, I think he walked through some walls or something like that. I, I'm not ready to try that yet. So, 
I don't think none of us in here tonight are, but at the same time, you know, he still has some same things in the complex of what we use today. You know, maybe we'll still be able to enjoy a good fish sandwich with, well, <laughs> whatever comes our way, but again, just teasing, sort of. But it says, and as we have borne, the, well, verse 50, now this I say, brother, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption, and here we go. But behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. That word sleep again is die. We shall not all die. I thought the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die and then comes a judgment. I do believe, and I think most of you in here believe also, that there's going to be a time when the Lord comes back to His church. He's going to, I don't believe He's going to set His foot on the, on the earth at that time, but I believe that we're going to meet Him in the air as the body of Christ. But when we do, we can't go in these earthly bodies. We can't go in this corrupted mortal body. Something has to take place. We have to be changed. How many of you all remember seeing some of the Tim LaHaye's and some of those movies, uh, Left Behind, and then uh, what was some of the other movies? I can't remember. There's like a whole series of different ones. Uh, and there was also some other movies back in the 60s called The Image of the Beast and uh, the, the Late Planet, The Late Great Planet and some other. But anyway, all those movies portray that rapture taking place. And again, a lot of times you see people, you know, driving in cars and, and people would be in airplanes and everything else. And all of a sudden they would be, the, the car would be empty. All of a sudden the driver would be gone. All of a sudden the pilot on a plane would be gone. All of a sudden all this destruction begins to happen because something's missing. And again, that's where they were trying to explain to us whether again they're, they're totally understanding it or not, that there's going to come a time and it's not going to happen over a hundred years, it's going to happen in a twinkling of an eye. All of a sudden, it's just going to take place. Again, going here, it says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be all changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Praise God. I don't know when that's coming up, but I, I got a feeling it's not that far away, you know. I got a feeling, and I know people say, you know, the, the world has, you know, just got worse and worse and everything else. And then you got others will say, well, they've been talking about Jesus coming back ever since I can remember and all that stuff. You know, doesn't the Bible say He comes when you least expect it? But you know what it tells us as Christians? We're to be looking for Him, aren't we? When do you look for Him? Amen. Not just when you get up first thing in the morning. Not just when you go to bed at night. Just Not when you just get through saying a, a prayer. No, all day long He can come back. And I know we consciously don't think about that all the time, but it should be on our heart and our spirit to know that the Lord can come back at any time, praise God. It says... At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, praise God. <laughs> We won't have to deal with it then, will we? It'll be over with. And again, like I said, death is called a enemy in other places in Scripture. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. And the strength of sin is the law. The law was basically to just make you conscious of your sins. The law didn't, again, when we talk about the 613 laws that was written back in the first five books of the Bible, you know, uh, not, to, not to mention trying to just follow the Ten Commandments. We have a hard enough time with those, let alone 613 laws of the way you do this, do that, and all the different holy days and all the different rituals. You know, we, we can't even keep the Ten. Matter of fact, it narrowed it down to two somewhere, didn't it? Wasn't there two commandments he said you could hang all the laws and all the prophet on? Anybody remember what that was? Just two. There was just two commandments. He said, on these two commandments, you can hang everything else on. In other words, you can sew it all into this. The Lord your God with all your strength, soul, and might. And the second one, love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. 
Amen. Those two right there. We have a hard time with those two, don't we? I'm talking about all of them. I'm talking not personally, but all people everywhere have a struggle with that many times. You know, we can say we, we, you know, we've got it all together and everything else, but how many times are trials and tribulations, temptations and things pulling and tugging at us, and we've got to pull ourselves back, don't we? That's why it's important for us to study to show ourselves approved. That's why it's important to stay focused in God's Word and, and to stay in prayer and, and to stay in fellowship with brothers and sisters in Christ. You know, COVID made that difficult, didn't it? You know, COVID made that, you know, and we're still dealing with the aftermath of that. You know, we're still not all comfortable about getting together. We still want to keep our social distance, wear our mask in and out whenever we will. But at the same time, we still miss that coming together like we did at one time, folks. You know, one thing I know Brother Cash taught us many times is that unity of prayer. You know, we always tuck hands with each other. You know, you can't do that no more. You don't want to do that because you don't know what somebody else may be having or not having and, you know, giving them or taking whatever. But at the same time, aren't you just looking forward to when this junk's over, when this thing's done with, and we can get back together in our same kind of coin on eel fellowship that we one time had, praise God. The sting of death is sin, and the strength of the sin is law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that what the song says? Victory in Jesus? You can't beat that, can you? Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I want you to turn with me to another familiar place. John chapter 14, and we'll finish up here and go for communion after that. But here in John's Gospel, the 14th chapter, and I know these all have to do with things that we're very familiar with, or I hope we are anyway. Jesus speaking here, of course it's written in red, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there's that word we were talking about earlier. You know, if this tent or this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building or a house not made with hands. But again, in my Father's house are what? Many mansions. That mansions, I believe, is some places they would, again, translate that. Like, what was the word I'm looking for? I'll come up with it here in a minute. In other words, dwelling places is the word I'm looking for. I don't know that, you know, when we think about mansions, we normally think about a big old house with a lot of walls in it, don't we? I don't know that it's going to be like that in heaven. I know that there's going to be gates. I know that there's going to be, you know, streets of gold and all that. But I don't know that we're going to have as many walls there as we, we do here. Don't we have walls between everything nowadays? We have walls on our houses. We have walls from one room to another because, you know, you want to have your privacy and this, that, and the other. I don't know that we'll even need privacy in heaven, will we? Because, I mean, everything will be open. And there'll be nothing that would be a shame. You remember Adam and Eve? They could run around like naked jaybirds. Remember that? <laughs> Said they weren't ashamed, wasn't they? Until their consciousness was open. And as soon as they sinned, all of a sudden the knowledge of good and evil, you know, the bad thoughts as well as the good thoughts come. Then they had, you know, the filthy thoughts and all the other stuff. So then they had to clothe themselves. So again, we'll not have that when we get to that other side. But it says... Are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. How was he doing that? Was he going to heaven and start laying concrete? No. He was getting ready to go to the cross. He was getting ready to lay down again his life for us. It says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. So heaven is definitely a place. Heaven is a place that we're going to go past this. And whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? There's that Thomas we always call Doubting Thomas, isn't it? But again, aren't we all somewhat guilty some ways? I mean, I'd like to see it printed up on a billboard and know exactly how it's going to happen for me. How about you tonight? when we're getting ready to cross over and all that stuff. 
And again, I know Thomas, you know, he, he doubted the Lord and wanted to see his hands and stuff. But all the disciples run off, didn't they? When the, when the rubber really hit the road. I'm just trying to take up for Thomas a little bit. But anyway, in verse 6, again, one of our favorite verses, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. There's no other name under heaven whereby man must be saved than at the name of Jesus. The truth, you know, Jesus said, the truth shall set you free. And the truth is God's word, not man's word, not man's opinion, not man's anything. And the life, and that is talking about that Zoe life, that's eternal life. It's not just life that we have here on this earth for the amount of time we're here, but it's an eternal life that doesn't end. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. What about these guys that get on TV and they say, well, there's probably more, more roles, and it's not always guys, there's gals that do it too. Some of the pretty big, biggest seen ones sometimes too. And say, you know, there, there's other roads to get there. There's other ways. You know, you can go to, you know, to some of these other gods and some of these other, you know, belief systems. Jesus pretty well narrowed it down, didn't he? You know, regardless of other people feel that way or not, it's sad because when they get to the end of their road, they're going to find out there was only one path. And if I didn't choose Jesus, then I'm a mess. And you say, well, again, that sounds like a very narrow religion. Didn't Jesus say wide and broad is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow and straight and narrow is the way that leadeth unto righteousness? Anybody got any thoughts or any questions you want to talk about the resurrection tonight or talking about the different thoughts about the body and the change and anything? Anybody? Well, I think I'm going to stop there tonight. We could go over to Thessalonians and some other places, but we're going to go ahead and get ready for communion tonight. You want to do the music and instruments if you want to come on back up here. And again, for you that haven't taken communion with us before, again, we're going to be doing that down here. And uh, Saturday, you want to come on up here? Dave, you want to go ahead? He's about to grab him. Go ahead. Thank you. Oh, that was wonderful. They'll just go ahead and grab it when they're on the edge. I'm not doing very good on this tonight. I need to put my mask on too. Whichever one you want. Crackers would probably be easier. But if you want to stand with us tonight, and again, keeping our distance.
have served at one or two. Again, remember that uh, not just trying to be religious, we're trying to do this in remembrance of Him. He said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. So the very thing that we've been talking about tonight, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, you know, that's what all this has got to do with. If it hadn't been for Him dying for us, if it hadn't been for Him going to that old rugged cross and, and being buried in that tomb, you know, this would be totally useless. You know, but when we know what He's done, and when we, again, celebrate that, so to speak, when we take of this and take of this, we're taking of His body and of His blood. Uh, again, I, I'm not saying we're literally in, in that phrase, but we are doing it in a sense of knowing that He did this for us. So tonight, as we hold up the bread to the Lord, will you agree with us in prayer? God, we ask you tonight, Lord, as we, again, remember what this, this bread represents to us tonight, we know that, again, as we think upon this, that your body was broken, it was bruised and chastised, it was given stripes, Lord. And Lord, we know that by your stripes we are healed, Lord. And God, we just claim the victory upon that. And we pray your blessings upon this bread tonight. In the name of Jesus, amen. Are you partake? And those are a little bit bigger crackers than normal. <laughs> Have to give me a minute to try not to whistle here. <laughs> Not making light of God for sure, but again, just try to do that. But anyway, let's hold that cup up to the Lord tonight. And Lord God, as we come to you tonight also with this cup of blessings, Lord, we know that, again, nothing but nothing but nothing but the blood of Jesus could cleanse us from all sin and all unrighteousness. Lord, we uh, again thank you for the shedding of your blood, for the remission of our sins, and we thank you for willing to shed it for us. And right now we pray your blessings upon this cup right now and for those that partake in Jesus' name. Amen. You might partake. And if you guys got a hymn for us, we'll sing along if you don't mind. It's so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to We thank you for those that have gathered in this house and for those that will watch by, again, the webcast when that's done also. We just pray your touch upon us. Be with us as we travel to our homes, those that are here tonight. And again, be with all of us till we get to that home on the other side safely for all of us. And we pray your hands upon many souls to turn people to the kingdom. And we thank you for this time in Jesus' name. And pray for those ones watching by web for their needs as well. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Again, have a good night. Be safe going home. <laughs>